How's it going everyone? So I made a course where I showed you how to build a, it's kind of like a minimal SaaS product using the T3 stack. And I deployed my application to Amplify, but a lot of people have asked me, how do you deploy this to SST? Because a lot of people are interested in it. So this is what this video is gonna teach you. I have a basic T3 app over here. I think it does a request to a TRPC endpoint to get a message. And that's what we're gonna to try to deploy. Now there are a couple of things I'm going to skip in this tutorial. Like I'm going to assume you have an Amazon AWS account and I'm going to assume you know how to create uh, IAM privileges so that you can actually run this deploy stuff inside of GitHub Actions and stuff like that. But let's just kind of get started. So I have a application, a T3 stack application set up already, but I haven't set up SST. So SST is a way to take your next app and basically get it deployed to Amazon with I don't know if it supports all the features that like Vercel might support, but it does support enough that you can actually have a working application using a lot of the serverless functions and CloudFront under the hood. So since I've already created a next app, I'm going to go ahead and just do this step. So npx create SST latest, and I'm going to run this right here in this terminal. Okay, you are in the Next.js project, so SST will be set up in drop-in mode. I'll say yes. All right, so that's going to create an SST config file, and this config file is basically going to define some resources, I think they're called constructs, to basically take all of your Next.js application code and get it deployed to AWS. Okay, so we should be able to keep this as is. And I'm gonna go ahead and just try to do an npm install because that's what it tells you what we need to do next. All right, so that is done basically installing the new SST uh, dependencies. So the next step is we have a really basic schema Prisma, but if you're gonna go to production, you need to have a real database, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to modify this a little bit so that instead of using SQLite, we're going to use Postgres. And that Postgres database is going to be hosted on Supabase, but you can use PlanetScale, you can use whatever database hosting service that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to Postgres. And we need to make sure we set a couple of things, such as database URLs. So let's go to our .env file. And we need to actually replace this with a real database URL. So going back to Supabase, which I think if I go to project settings and go to database, you can get a URL for this entire thing. Let's figure out which one it is. So let's go to node. Let's copy this. Hopefully I can do this without messing stuff up. Now your password, you have to replace your password with your real password. I don't remember what my password was. So I'm going to go ahead and just reset my database password real quick. Go ahead and copy a pre-generated secure password, paste it in. Okay, so now we have the database URL set up in our .env. Keep in mind, we're going to have to do this when we get it deployed to SST. So we're going to do that in just a second. But let's go back to our schema file. And some things that you're going to have to do, at least I had to do this when um, I was kind of getting this set up, is you have to allow Prisma to basically tell it which target binaries it needs to download. So the main downfall that I can see is that when you try to deploy SST from your laptop, it's going to try to install various Prisma binaries for your MacBook. If you're on Mac or you're on Windows, so it may not work unless you are actually running on the same OS that Lambda is running, which is Linux. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put these binary targets so that when we try to deploy this to Lambda, it'll still work. Now leave a comment if there's some other workaround that I don't need to do to get this working, but I had to do this to get my stuff deployed out. Okay, so our schema is updated. Now, the second thing I want to do is just to verify that everything is working. And now that we have the .env file set up, what we can do is we, I can say npx prisma db push, and that should hopefully take our data changes, our, our schema, which is um, example, and that should push it to our super base database. So let's just go ahead and try this and see what happens. If this works fine, then you know everything's pretty much set up good. Okay, so I think this worked fine. And also you can go to Supabase in this example, and you'll see that we have an example table here, and we should be good to go. So now the next steps is before we deploy this out, we have to go to our SST config, and we kind of have to configure our next site to know what environment variables it has access to. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pass a third argument here, and I'll say environment, and we're going to say database URL, process.env database URL. Okay, so this is basically when you do an SST deploy, it's going to look at your environment variables and it's going to pass that in to CDK so it knows what environment variables to kind of set up on your Lambda functions. 
Now, unfortunately, like I said, in order to get this stuff working, um, you can't just deploy from your laptop half the time. But if you're trying to build like professional software, typically you're going to use, be using a CI CD pipeline, right? So in our case, we are going to be setting up GitHub Actions to basically build and deploy this whenever we push code to our repo. So I'm going to make a new folder here called .github. And inside of this, I'll put a new folder called Workflows. And by the way, all this code is going to be on my repo. So like, if you don't want to watch this, just go to my repo and get that code. So let's just go ahead and copy an existing workflow file that I have because me typing this all out won't be very fun to watch. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of this stuff and just keep database URL. So how a GitHub action workflow works is basically you can say whenever someone pushes a change to your branch, you can go ahead and run a deploy job. Okay, so in our case, we're going to say run a job on Ubuntu, and this is key because we want to basically build Prisma and SST using the same type of OS that, um, like, so it sets up the correct binaries, right? Um, and then we're going to set this environment variable so that we can get a secrets from GitHub, and we can pass that to our build job. And then finally, we're going to check out some code. We're going to set up Node 18, going to install some dependencies, and then we're going to run the deploy, which is going to do an MPX Prisma generate. And that's going to kind of set up the binaries that's needed for doing the deployment. And then it's going to do SST deploy stage prod. This stuff is over your head, then it's fine. You can just copy and paste this file and everything should be good. But there's still more steps, right? This is so now let's go to our Git repo, right? So SST examples, my Git repo, we're just going to settings here and we're going to go to environments. And this is basically where you set up environment variables. You know what? I lied to you. You have to go to secrets and variables and I'm going to go to actions. Now I want to create a new secret here. Make sure you click on the secret tab and I'm going to go ahead and say new repository secret and we're going to say database URL. And remember, we're going to copy that database URL that we got from Supabase, paste it in there, add the secret. So now what this does is when GitHub Actions runs, it will be able to deploy a Lambda and have that Lambda point to the correct database URL. Now, and then I think about it, there's actually some other environment variables that we're going to have to set up, right? We're going to have to set up some more secrets. First one is going to be AWS access key ID. And I'm going to go ahead and just add this and you guys can't see it. And the other one will be AWS secret access key. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and save it. And I'll cut this part out so you don't see my keys. All right, so now we've got three environment variables set up. These two are needed to be able to run SST on your GitHub action. Okay. And now that I think about it, I think we probably forgot to add something to our workflow. So we're going to go back to our deploy workflow. I do believe I forgot to add in some things here. We're going to go ahead and add these two in. Okay, so we're going to grab those secrets that we defined in GitHub Actions Secrets Manager. And we're going to put that in the environment so that when we run SST deploy, it knows how to access our AWS resources. Okay, a lot of stuff. I'm assuming if you're a beginner, you've already gotten lost. but that's fine. Just clone my repo. So now for hopefully we have it all set up correctly. I don't know if we do, but we're going to go ahead and add all this. So I'm going to say get add all. Get commit and I'll say setting up deployment. I'm going to go ahead and push that to main. Now, since we have this GitHub action in this directory, it's going to kick off a build. So if I go over to my project, I think you can actually go to actions here. Click on actions and notice that a build is now running. Okay. Pretty cool how that works automatically. Now we can watch this build and watch it hopefully pass. Uh, if you ever worked in DevOps stuff, you know it just it constantly stuff fails and you have to rerun and fail and rerun, change stuff and rerun, but hopefully it works. All right, so it did the npm install stuff. Now it's doing the deployment stuff, which is basically running that Prisma generate, and then it should run SST deploy prod soon. Now, the first time you run an SST deploy, it's going to take quite a while because behind the scenes, it's using cloud formation to basically spin up all your resources. And from what I've seen, Amazon and cloud formation is pretty slow. But after the first deployment, this stuff is actually going to be a lot quicker, right? If you want the most fast deployments you've ever seen, you're going to want to use Vercel. I, I don't think I've used anything that's faster for deploying a next application than Vercel. Like it takes like maybe 15 seconds or less to like get your changes deployed. But Again, we're going for budget. We're budget engineers. So if you want to spend since a month to have this stuff deployed, then you want to use SST. So we just got a TypeScript error. We just have to basically fix this so that it can kind of make progress. I'm just going to put an exclamation mark here, add it, commit it, and push it. 
and that'll kick off another build. Sometimes you just have to do this over and over again until you get it fully working. It's kind of a big pain, but... Okay, so we got another build kicking off. We'll come back and check this in like five minutes or so. Now it's getting to the cloud formation part of the deployment, right? This stuff can take quite a while for your first run. So you just got to be patient and just kind of let it do its thing. You come back and check in 10, 20 minutes. That's how long I've seen it take to set up a CloudFront distribution. So while it's deploying, I do want to talk about this Next.js site. Remember, you can configure things directly here. For example, if you wanted to change like how long the logs stick around uh, in your Lambda functions, you can do something like this. I forget what the actual thing is. I think it's like a log retention. I don't know. But anyway, you can customize things under the hood, assuming that the construct has ways for you to get into it. Um, I made a PR recently where I added the ability to do log retention here because by default, I think you get three days of logs. But honestly, like I need 30 days or more to re retain the logs. So go and look through the docs. I mean, they have all this stuff kind of like documented. Um, like here, log retention. Yeah, this is something that I made a PR for. And you can see that if you want to basically set this up, to retain logs longer, you can do something like that. Okay, so definitely look through this. If you need to do custom domains or stuff like that, or you need to change the cache policy, you have the ability to do that. And that's one reason I like using SST because it gives you the flexibility to kind of modify your Next.js deployment as needed. I do think they talk about custom domains here. So if you want to get a custom domain, you can do that. They tell you how to set up with Route 53, or if you want to use an external domain, which is down here, like for example, let's say you're hosting your domain on, I don't know, uh, Namecheap or something. You can actually just use an external domain true. You can point Namecheap to your distribution using like an A record or a C name. And that's also another way you can get it all set up. Changing the default timeout or changing the memory size of your lambdas is also kind of important. Um, I think in my case, I had to bump up my memory size for my SAS icon generator project to two gigabytes. I think the default is one. So if you need more memory or you need longer execution times, you can always just bump that up. So, all right, so this actually ran a lot faster than I think it was going to. It took seven minutes to do the deployment. Um, and when it's done, you'll see that you get a URL here. So hopefully, keep your fingers crossed that this works you can go to our deployed T3 stack application. And I actually added some code to make it query our database. So you notice down here, it has four records. This is actually data that I manually added to the, the Postgres database, right? So I went here and I added some records. Let's go ahead and add like nine more or five more. And uh, when those are done saving, I can go back to my app. Notice that they all show up. So, all right, so we successfully deployed a T3 stack application Technically, you don't need to use TRPC. You don't need to use the T3 stack. This could have been done with just the next application. Um, and SST would basically follow the same steps, right? Except for you wouldn't need to set up a database URL. The things you would have to follow would be setting up your AWS um, access keys and your secret keys, right? So if you want to see the code I use for this video, go to my GitHub repo and go to T3-SST-example, -ST right? All that code's there. And my final remark is whenever you're playing around with AWS and you create access keys and secret keys, make sure you never commit them to your repo. Make sure you never leak them, okay? I'm going to warn you now, if you accidentally leak those keys and you commit them to your public repo and those keys have administrator privileges, there's a high chance that someone is going to basically grab your keys and spin up a ton of EC2 instances mine Bitcoin and you'll have a $3,000 bill within an hour. So be very careful to not commit those to any public repo. I hope you guys spend a little bit more time learning about SST. I like it a lot. Um, but like always, if you just want to get something deployed quick and have like the best developer experience, you're going to want to go with Vercel. I'll just be honest with you all. Cool. Well, other than that, have a good day. Happy coding. And I got a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to talk to other developers or just hang out and maybe send me a message once in a while. All right. Have a good day.